Are you guys following along? Like, is it just me? There's no way someone wrote this and thought, oh yeah, that's that's fucking normal English. In the previous episode, we made an enemy scene and also a main scene. And in this episode, we're gonna finish our cute little project here, adding the HUD, background, and also sound effects. Okay, let's begin. Heads up display, the final piece our game needs is a user interface to display things like a score, a game over message, and a restart button. That's that's a lot actually. <laughs> Create a new scene, other node, canvas layer, new scene, other node, canvas layer. So what this node does is draw our UI elements on the layer above the rest of the game so that the information it displays isn't covered up by any game elements like the player or mobs. We'll need a score a message and a start button so the basic note for ui elements is control and we'll be using two types of control node which are the label and button nodes so let's add these nodes to the scene control a label and we can actually select it again from here now we need a button and also a timer which i'll just select from here this is going to be score label message start button message timer okay so let me see what a label does though a control for displaying plain text so if you want to have text in your game it's gonna be a label gotcha so this game assets that we downloaded from the site has a specific game font that we have to import. We're going to follow these steps first. So go here, inspector, theme overrides, fonts, and then load. Oh, here. Okay. Increase the font size to 64, uh, which we do. Where the fuck do we do that? Theme overrides, font sizes. Jesus Christ. And we got to do the same for message. Oh my god, we have to scroll down the whole time. There's no way we have to repeat that for every fucking thing, right? Oh my god, no. There has to be a better way. <laughs> Arrange the note as shown below. You can drag the notes to place them manually or more precise placement. Use anchor presets. Oh, fuck yeah. I actually like that. So we go here. Let's click on score label. And then put it here and here. Oh, we got a anchor preset it here. Paw, and then in the middle. Okay, well, we <laughs> gotta add text to it, though. <laughs> I forgot to add the text. My bad. Uh, for the message, dodge the creeps. Ugh, I feel like I'm doing something wrong here. Like in the middle. Fucking hell. Okay, yeah, I just dragged this one over here. Oh, and the start button has a uh, grayish background already. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh my god, it says here how to do that. Fuck you, man. Sorry. Set so the auto wrap mode to word. Otherwise, the label will stay on one line. That's how I do it. Okay, wait. So boom. Auto wrap mode. Word. Under control layout transform, set X to size 480 to use the entire width of the screen. Jesus Christ. Control layout transform. Control layout transform. Size X to. 480 actually works put it in the middle and then as for the start button gotta go here layout transform and then the x will be 200 and 100 choose the anchor preset center bottom center bottom and then set the y position to 580 okay so this is what the screen looks like jeez on the message timer set the wait time to two and set the one shot property on message timer to one shot what the fuck does this do actually if true the timer will stop after reaching the end otherwise as by default the timer will automatically restart so if the wait time is two once it hits zero it will stop if this is on but wait well, there's also auto start oh okay when you start the scene this will auto start ah, okay 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 yeah so one shot basically means just do it once and that's a, that's a bit like a weird naming but yeah can they just call it once or something like Maybe it's just me. Go here, attach a script, and then we add a signal, start game. We want to display a message temporarily, such as get ready, so we have the following code. We are here. Like, uh, I guess I'll do it here. And what this one does is it goes to message. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when we call this function and we fill in the text in here, it will basically change this text. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Oh, damn, that's crazy. And we're gonna show it, and then the message timer will start okay and then we also have to put in this code what does this do we also need to process what happens when the player loses the code below will show game over for two seconds and then return to the title screen and after a brief pause show the start 
button okay, let's have a look here yeah so this is the function and we call the function here with the text game over wait until the message timer has counted down okay await this once it hits time out then you want to show dodge the creeps oh and you have to show it like this okay 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 make a one shot timer and wait for it to finish okay this is just what the fuck get tree create timer time out what the fuck start button dot show okay i don't get this one so let's add this here in our question list oh maybe it says here where well, you need to pause for a brief time an alternative to using a timer node is to use the scene trees create timer function this can be very useful to add delay such as in the above code where we want to await some time before showing the start button so it's basically just a handy trick but but that's that's uh, out of my level <laughs> add the code to the hud to update the score which is updating the score score level of text is equal to the string score connect the pressed signal of start button and the timeout signal of the to the hud node and add the following code to the functions oh, guys <laughs> jesus christ so start button here node pressed signal connect so then we did this and for this one message timer which is this one and once it hits time out connect and then basically add these to here like so okay and this is what it looks like graphically this is some interesting code damn okay okay i'm getting like a good idea of what's happening over here actually uh, so we gotta go back to the main instance the hudson in main like you did with the player scene and then it should look like this if we did not miss anything so go back to main instance hud open and it looks like this okay okay so now we need to basically use the functions that we created in the hud and add it to the main script yo am i not englishing anime what the hell does this say what in the note tab <laughs> just i just Follow along step by step. Connect the HUD's start game signal to the new game function of the main node by clicking the pick button in the connect signal window and selecting a new game method or type new game below receiver method in a window. Are you guys following along? Like, is it just me? There's no way someone wrote this and thought, oh yeah, that's that's fucking normal English. Nah, maybe it's just me though. I don't know. Start game signal. Okay, so do I go here? Okay, here. Let's go here. Double click on that and then signal to new game function. What the fuck? We have to wait, we have to use this pick. Oh my god, I cannot do this. Okay, what does it do though? Wait, what did I do? So the HUD's start game, which is basically this. This is a signal. When we go to the start button. Oh, this is the signal. This is the stick signal on start button press. When we press the start button, it will hide the start button. It will also admit the signal. The signal goes here into the main script and it then activates this one. So it's like when it gets emitted and you connect it to this one, then this gets activated. Why is it like that? Jesus Christ, that's so hard though. Holy shit. Okay, okay. I kind of get it. But yeah, we can see that it has a green thingy here. Is there a way to maybe see... Oh, yeah. I was wondering if you could see like the source, which signal and like the target. But it's all in here. It's actually fucking crazy. Oh, damn. So you can see here when the mob timer gets the timeout signal, it will basically start off this whole function. Oh, wow. Holy fuck, dude. That makes life so much easier. Whoa. That's pretty nice. In new game, update the score display and show the get ready message. So new game, we're going to add these. In game over, we need to call the corresponding HUD function. Game over here. So from HUD, use this one. What the fuck is this again? Oh, show the text. And wait until the message timer reached time out. And we also want to update the HUD score, which updates the score. Warning, remember to remove the call to new game from ready if you haven't already. Otherwise, your game will start automatically. Oh, let's put in pass for now. When you're ready to play, click the play the project button. The problem still hasn't been solved. Why the fuck does it play this scene? I don't fucking know, man. It's so annoying. I don't know. Okay, run the selected scene. Looks like this. Jesus Christ, dude. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. oh Marvin. Go, Marvin. Oh my god, that's so nice, dude. Alright, cool. Game works. Nice. 
If you play until game over and then start a new game right away, the creeps from the previous game may still be on screen. It would be better if they all disappeared at the start of the new game. Wait, really? Oh, they are. Oh, shit. So it would be better if they disappeared at the start of the new game. We just need a way to tell all the mobs to remove themselves. We can do this with the group feature. So in the mob scene, select the root node and click the node tab. Okay, so how do we do that? We go to the mob scene. We select the root node. Click the node tab. And then next to signals, click groups. And then we use the plus button to open the new group dialog. Okay. Mob scene. Node. Groups plus and we're going to add the group we will call it mobs okay so now all the mobs will be in the mobs group then we can add the following line to the new game function in the main so we go back to the main file main script and in the new game function basically when we start the game up we're gonna use this thing which will call the group mobs and then it will queue free everything there as a string though that's that's interesting so now if we restart the game, all the mobs should disappear. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, oh that was so simple. What makes it a bit difficult is the get tree function though, but it's fine. We'll learn about those someday, guys. So what did we do? We created a HUD with, with the type canvas layer. Well, we don't know why though, but we skip it for now. We added all of these thingies. We added labels, which basically display text for these two. We added a start button with the type button, which shows this cool button. And we also added a message timer. And what this message timer does is it basically waits a bit until it shows the message. Jesus Christ, that's crazy. For the start button, we added a signal, which is the press signal. It will emit the start game signal. And we actually, when we go to the main script, we actually connected it to this one. So if you can see here, source is the HUD, signal is the start game, target is the main. Which basically says, hey, when the button gets pressed, send a signal to the new game function to activate it. At least I think that's what it does. Which will activate this whole code. So set the score to zero, set the player in start position, start the start timer, update the score, show this message, get ready. And clear all the mobs off the screen and the other one is the message timer signal uh, which is set to two seconds and only and one shot which basically means hey if the timer hits the time out we want to hide the message uh, which is this one which is dodge the creeps so let me explain it visually score gets updated because of this function after clicking the start button the start button will hide because of this function okay i cannot explain it this will show the text where we start the game this will show the text but when it's game over. And then you can read the code for yourself here. Jesus Christ. But what ends up happening is when the timer hits the time out, it will hide the message. Which means that this will disappear. Also this one, but not this one. Okay, okay. Let's move on. God damn it. The default gray background is not very appealing, so let's change its color. One way to do this is to use the color rect node. Make it the first node under main so it will be drawn behind the other nodes so let's click on main script and also main just to be sure click on the root node add a color rect and we have to put it here all the way at the top when we go here we can actually see the color rect and let's make it like something like this i guess for now and then we can just drag it like this wow and uh, that's how you add a background apparently <laughs> Okay, cool. Ooh, wait, I, 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 I kind of like it. Oh, damn. Like underwater shit. Nice. Sound and music can be the single most effective way to add appeal to the game's experience. In your game's art folder, you have two sound files. House in a Forest loop for background music and game over dot wav for when the player loses. So add two audio stream player nodes as children of main. Name one of the music and name and the other death sound on each one click on the stream property select load and choose the corresponding audio file that's how you add audio in oh that's cool audio stream player 2d oh just audio stream player okay apparently but this one and another one so we go here we go to the stream property and then we can load this is the bgm and here this one's the over all audio is automatically imported with the loop setting disabled if you want the music to loop seamlessly click on the stream file arrow and select make unique and then select on the stream file and check the loop box make unique 
by the fuck though and and then the loop box where the fuck's the loop playback stream click on the stream what the fuck man well here it says check the loop box but i don't i don't auto play playback type i don't see the loop option here to play the music add music play in the new game function and music stop in the game over function oh it's that easy so boom and then music stop when the game's over here and also the death sound play when the game's over huh Ah, of course. All right, now it should work though. Jesus, it <laughs> scared the fuck out of me. Yo, yo, let's put you back to fucking 15. And I also don't want you to kill me, so I'll put you to... Where the fuck do I put you? I'll put you on minus two. Okay, let's try it out. It didn't loop. It didn't loop. Oh my God, it didn't play the death sound. Oh wait, it's so soft. Death sound dot play. Wait. Oh my god, I didn't play the death sound. What the fuck? Death sound. It should work. Far. Yeah, it should work, no? Why is it so hard? Holy fuck, dude. Is that. It's on 10 fucking ears. Holy shit, dude. Okay, okay fair. Better. The sound works. Oh, hell yeah. But it's not looping, though. Wait, now it can loop? Oh, make unique. And then on. What? Because it's a different type? That's fucking weird, man. Nice. Oh my god, we made a game! Okay, there's also this part about keyboard shortcuts, which basically says if you press the enter button instead of clicking on the start button, you can just press enter and it will work. But let's not do that. Wow, guys, holy shit, we made a game! We made a fucking game in just three episodes. Holy shit, dude. I did not learn anything. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I did learn a lot. But there's so much stuff with like the whole scripting so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna redo the whole tutorial again i think and then have a look at the code so we're actually gonna dive a bit deeper into the documentation and then i'll just try to learn as much as possible fill up my whole word document with notes and then the goal is for me to make this game again for like 50 percent by myself because i'm not able to do 100 on my own and that's okay so let's do that for the next episode but for this episode, we are finished for now. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next episode. Peace.